I developed this theory. It's called the CTMU. Language is, uh, as I say, the most general algebraic structure there is. And to see that, any other al algebraic structure you can name is a language. When you talk about syntax and semantics, you are talking about a language. And as I say, syntax is the intrinsic structure of the language, whereas semantics is that involves things like definitions and interpretations. The syntax is intrinsic. If you take a look at a language, that that are those are the absolute invariants that every intelligible statement is made from. You know about grammar and non-terminals and how non-terminals are substituted cumulatively until they result in terminal expressions, right? You have to define terms. All the terms, syntactic terms, are supposed to be primitive. The non-terminals are cognitively primitive, whereas uh, when you get into semantics, now you're combining those primitives to get defined terms to get definitions, and then you're combining those in certain ways, and then once you form your expression, now you have to interpret it or form a model of it in some other structure that you've got, right? And so it's a, it's a big process. Uh, so, what, so what you do is you start out with, you, you say, you look outside yourself at the external universe and you see objects that display certain patterns, certain groups of colors and so forth. Well, the groups of patterns, of course, are formal. They're of a formal nature in the sense of, uh, of platonic form. And, and then you have instances, physical instances, external to yourself of those patterns. But what they are, you have certain syntactic categories in your head. In, in the sense of Kant, and what you're seeing are instances or values of those. In other words, the values are related to a coordinate system which you impose on your external universe. And you're really talking about a, a duality there. You know, you're talking about the patterns that, in terms of which you see the external universe, and you're talking about then the instances in terms of which you conceive the patterns. So the, that's the coupling, and you're doing the coupling. A syntactor is a generalization of a computational acceptor. It's a proto-computational genera uh, generalization of what in computation theory is called an acceptor. Okay, an acceptor is just a processing unit that accepts input from the external environment, applies a kind of syntactic filter in it to decide what gets through and in what form, and then, you know, processes it and returns it to the environment. The universe is quantized in terms of things called syntactors that can actually accept input from the universe and then return output in the forms of, of state transitions or behavior. So on one side of that, you've got acceptance, which in computation theory, you know what an acceptor is, right? It's just a little, it's, a, it's an automaton that accepts input from the outside world and then, you know, becomes throughput and it's processed inside the syntactor and then it's used, then it, it's classified actually, it becomes a classifier. And then you get output that can actually be returned to the world in, in the form of an external state as opposed to the internal state of the syntactor. Now, customarily, mathematicians define a manifold in terms of points with no internal structure. We've got no structure at all because they're cuts. The universe is quantized in terms of things called syntactors that can actually accept input from the universe and then return output in the forms of, of state transitions or behavior. Those syntactors are distributed throughout reality and their syntactic distribution forms the medium of existence. In the CTMU, points are defined in terms of states that are syntactors that actually have this input-output capacity. And the input capacity is the sensing capacity. That's what makes it a sensor. And then the controller part is the way we can actually control what our bodies do by using internal design. That information mappings are also captured in these little quanta, these, these, these state transition events of syntactors. Primary syntax is internally replicated inside each syntactor up to the complexity of that syntactor, which means that the degree to which a syntactor can model the universe around it depends on its amount of inherent complexity. And some syntactors, for example, secondary syntactors like us, have great internal complexity that allows us to model global syntax.
Now, global syntax is where emotions, qualia, and mathematics reside, and they exist as bundles of attributes. And those bundles have the mathematical structure of a KN complete graph. A complete graph is a set of vertices and a set of edges connecting the vertices. For example, a triangle is a three graph. It's got three vertices. Basically, when you talk about distinguishable feelings, emotions, and qualia, each of those is a KN complete graph with a certain number of vertices. And these graphical structures exist in syntax. You can take, for example, a set of primary colors, red, blue, and green, depending on whether you're filtrating or mixing the colors. Because any individual color can be expressed in terms of some combination of those three primary colors, this means the color itself is a K3 complete graph. Whenever you're distinguishing a color, it is a result of three values being syntactically substituted into the complete graph of that attribute. A and B? C. Taking emotions, as another example, you've got a syntactic differential parameter, which doesn't have to be physical at all. Emotions aren't discerned along an axis in physical space. They're differentiated syntactically. We're able to abstract the differences between emotions and represent them in a graphical KN structure. Mathematics is part of the syntax of reality, which is the invariant structure of reality. Well, redness is definitely a property that exists only in syntax, in cognitive syntax. And so if you lack a cognitive syntax, you're not going to have redness. Here's the thing. With, in the generative universe, you've got syntax. You've got a universal distributed form that is in every syntactor. That means that every point of reality is automatically covered by the UDF or by syntax as it is created. In other words, the UDF or the universal syntax of reality is invariant with respect to rescaling. You can re arbitrarily rescale reality because it's generative, because it's constantly being generated, because the universe is expanding, right? And syntax doesn't change. So that's what the CTMU is. It deals with irreducible entities like us.